There is a story, an anecdote about a three-year-old boy who wants to take care of his little sister. The boy urged his parents that he wanted to take care of his sister by himself. Knowing the dangers of sibling rivalry, the parents were apprehensive, but the boy insisted so much that they finally gave in. However, they took the precaution of listening to the child minder that was in the baby's room. What they heard was the boy approaching his sister and asking with great urgency, you must tell me about God because I'm beginning to forget. The soul basically knows God, but since it's full in the physical world, the sleeping of self-purity has made human neglect the primordial witness and testimony to God. A social system devoid of spirituality, either from family or society, is the cause of spiritual suffering, the loss of primordial witness, and the loss of one's faith. In the story earlier, it implicitly shows that social conditioning is worldly. Something principal and inherent in the spiritual reality of human begins being eroded and crossed by profane desire. In this context, self-purification, thus Giatunas, in Sufism becomes urgent and becomes a primary need for spiritual travelers. Sufism describes life as a long journey, a journey of the whole reality towards the divine presence. As Faridudin Ator described the army of birds performing the spiritual journey towards the Simog's kingdom. In that journey, self-purification is a vehicle as well as direction, space as well as time, and state as well as station to become a complete human being to meet the divine presence. The dervishes perform spiritual practice continuously in a circular journey, the end of which is the beginning and the beginning of which is the end. The mystical journey is a paradoxical journey from the self that always goes to no end. Nafs literally means essence. The essence of something is called the soul of something or its reality, Hakiko. In Aristotelian terminology, the term means soul. Either the soul is material, for example, the vegetative soul and the animal soul, or abstract, for example, the soul of celestial objects and the rational soul. In the Sufi dictionary, the nafs is defined as soul, or exactly self, that is between the spirit, or ruh, which means light, and the body, or jism, which means darkness. So the nafs is between the two, which is in the imaginal realm, barzakh. In simple terms, the soul nafs, is a combination of spirit which comes from the spiritual realm and the physical body. The existence of the soul can be seen from its character or disposition. When Sufi authors use the term nafs, they refer to our negative tendencies. At the lowest level, it is the nafs which leads us astray. In that context, nafs means the physical soul, the place of wickedness, various lower desires. In this sense, nafs is called nafsul amara. In the Quran, surely the soul commands to evil, save whom my Lord may show mercy. Therefore, this nafs tends to evil. The Sufis often understand it in this last sense, so they teach us how to purify it. In Sufism, it is called self-purification, tazkiyat nafs. The origin of the word tazkiyat means pruning the plant. In other words, to remove what is harmful for its growth. This term, when applied to the human personality, means to remove all spiritual diseases and evil traces that prevents him from being able to experience God. In Islam, the main purpose of religion and sharia and the ultimate objective of raising prophets is to teach taskiyat. Literally, the term taskiyat includes two meanings. First is to purify and cleanse anything that pollutes. Second is to develop something to reach perfection. The word zakat, arms tax, comes from the same root as taskiyat, which is to purify an individual wealth by recognition of God's right over a portion of it. In other words, taskiyat nafs or self-purification means adorning oneself with moral and spiritual qualities after cleansing it of its despicable and animalistic qualities. The term taskiyat nafs is implied in a verse in the Quran by the soul and the one who fashioned it and inspired it as to what makes it iniquitous or reverence. Indeed, he prospers who purifies it. In Sufism, Tazkiyatun Nafs or self-purification becomes principle for anyone 
taking a step in a spiritual path. The soul in the sense of the tyrannical soul, Arnafs al amaro is considered capable of being purified. When one is aware that this tyrannical soul has to be purified, he reaches the stage of Nafsul Lawama or the regretful soul. In the Quran, and I swear by the blaming soul. When this soul, Nafsul Lawama, is truly purified, it will rise again in the stage of Nafsul Mutma'inna, the peaceful soul. In the Quran, O thou soul at peace, return unto thy Lord, content, contenting. Enter among my servants. At this stage, the soul has divine attributes and will follow what is commanded by its Lord. To attain the peaceful soul, the soul has to be cleansed of its impurities and corruption, which is simply to change the tyrannical soul, Annafsul Ammar, into the peaceful soul, Annafsul Mutma'inna. Taskiyatun Nafs, self purification, is also interpreted as an effort to condition the soul to feel peaceful and happy due to being close to God through worship. Actually, Tazgatun Nafs or self purification is an ontological journey. In Sufism, the main aim of spiritual journey is to return to God, remember Him all times, and be present with Him without pause. Technically, these activities are termed Murakaba or Sufi meditation, in which one watches over their spiritual heart where God dwells. As the Prophet said, the heart of the believer is the house of God. To experience this, a dervish needs a continuous process, a process that leads him to a mystical state. The process is self-purification itself. Self-purification can be analogous to someone who is polishing a mirror until it shines, with the result that his soul will be able to catch a clear reflection of the image, the image of God. This can be lived and expressed as a union with love or as a visio beatifica. That is when the soul can apprehend all beyond its reach, being overwhelmed by God's perfect light. This can also be described as the lifting of the veil of ignorance, the veil covering the essential identity of God and his creatures. According to the Sufis, the spirits are originating from Alamul Amr, the divine realm, always stimulates to the goodness. But since it is incorporated in a perfect physical body, then it becomes negligent, instigates wickedness, and heedless of being drugged by the mundane things. Therefore, the process of self-purification is needed continuously. The process of which is indeed a burdensome task, because this is what the Prophet Muhammad meant as the greatest jihad, the greatest striving that is fighting the lower soul. It is something uncontrollable, a whisper that instigates someone to deviate. It is important to remember that a Sufi is the one who has been able to control or subdue his lower soul, not terminate it. Mounting the pool, slowly I return homeward. Riding the pool, I reach home. In modern psychology, the pool is a symbol of the energy of the sacred self, which is first experienced as a raw, instinctual energy that lies hidden beneath the layers of our conditioning, namely the wild pool. The task of a traveler or dervish is to subdue the wild pool and transform it into a tame cow and agree to be brought home, so that it is not lower soul, instinct and ego that control the dervish, but the dervish himself that becomes a controller. That is the technical objective of the process of self-purification. The chief crux of Taskiyatun Nafs is none other than going to God and for the sake of Him. The serenity of the soul in life is a mere effect, not the objective. The Sufis inform that self-purification is to lift the veil of ignorance, the veil of negligence that makes a person forget the primordial covenants before the existence of the world. And when thy Lord took from the children of Adam, from their loins, their progeny, and met them by witness concerning themselves, Am I not your Lord? They said, Yea, we bear witness, lest you should say on the day of resurrection. Truly of this we were heedless. To experience that, to remember the primordial covenants, one must conquer, as the Prophet Muhammad said, man's first enemy is the carnal soul, or the lower soul, that lies hidden within him. Indeed, in a psychological term, the ego means I or I-ness. According to Kai Jung, the problem is when the ego claims that it is the center of the existence. The ego always pretends to be the center to make one ignore the self. In Jungian term, the self is the unification of consciousness and unconsciousness in a person and represents the psyche as a whole. According to Jung, the self 
symbolized as a circle or a mandala is realized as the product of individuation which is the process of integrating various aspects of one's personality. Perhaps an appropriate analogy for distinguishing between the ego and the self is, as Rumi explains, the eye of Iblis, the leader of the devils, and Pharaoh represents the ego, while the eye of Bayezid Bastomi and Al-Halas represents the self. The teaching of the Sufis about it is a guide for the dervishes to return to God focusing on one goal that is to enable people to open up their eyes and see. As a metaphor, the path is the journey from west to east, the journey from darkness to the tone of light to watch the sun rise. In making that journey, the nafs is not only a hindrance, but also a means. This is a paradox that the nafs, which is an obstacle in the spiritual journey, is also a significant thing in the spiritual journey. The journey in the self-purification is eliminating the ego. According to the Sufis, the solidified ego is Ainas, a statement of duality, the beginning of suffering of separation. Only few people can carry out this kind of transformation, uprooting the ego from itself and reuniting it with its true root. A Sufi says, your essence is to live your eyeness. In such a way, one can obliterate duality and separation. As long as there is the slightest trace of ego, one will not reach the level of Anafsul Kamila, the perfect soul or the pure soul, in which there is no place for two eye. In the lowest level, yours is yours, mine is mine. In the middle level, yours is yours, mine is yours. In the highest level, there is neither mine nor yours. The realization of this is strenuous thing. There is a Turkish proverb saying, traveling the path of Sufism is like chewing a long pin made of iron. After one's chew hurts, one's teeth fall out, the long pin remains intact. Stepping in the path of Sufism is strenuous. Ego can sink and arise. The path of self-purification is never endless. One of the Sufis named Fariduddin Attar calls it a journey that has a beginning but has no end. See you.